Good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So we're here <clears throat> Wednesday night, which is Favorites Night. We do an episode of Favorites every week. Last couple weeks we've been doing a two-parter, which is done now. There was a episode just before this, which is going to be kind of, this is kind of a second parter for that one. So that episode was called Five Albums That Signaled a Change or Was a Change in Musical Direction for the Band. So this is called Another Five Albums That Was a Musical Direction Change for the Bands. I've picked another five bands. Probably could have done a three-parter here, but I think I'll probably stop with the two-parter because these are the ones I know the most about. Some of the other ones, I'm not as familiar with the band, so I'm just basically hearing it as a uh, casual, subjective listener, which really I don't think flies too well with a lot of people. It doesn't fly well with me, I know that. So I picked five here. They're no, they're, these, these are not really in any particular order. Um... Like they're not my favorites or my least favorites because there's not really a favorites or a least favorites thing in this particular video. We're just going to talk about the albums I think were the albums that kind of made a change in the direction. Some of them are more obvious, some of them not so obvious. So um, anyways, and you know, for the most part, I probably didn't like the musical change in direction that these bands went in for the most part. And I can't even say I didn't like it. I, I, I liked the other, I liked the way they were before, not as much. So that's probably a better term to describe it. I don't like it as much, but I don't hate it. In the case of most of them, I don't hate it. It's a couple of them I really don't like, but, um, and we'll get into it. I'll do them all individually, one at a time, and we'll just, I'll just tell you what I think and what's the change in direction and, you know, most people aren't going to be surprised by any of these bands or even the musical change in direction. Some people absolutely love the change in direction, think the band was better when they changed. Other people absolutely hate it. And then there's people like me, for the most part, I look at all five of the bands, and with the exception of one band, I really don't hate any of the music that they took a different change in direction from. And in one, in the case of one of these bands, they did a couple of changes, so it's almost like they were lost. So they were playing one style of music, they made this change, they stuck with it for a couple albums, then they made another change, stuck with that for an album, then made another change. Finally, they, they, they seem, after a bit of time, they seem to have picked up a, a different style of music, which wasn't too dissimilar to their original style, and they went on. And Sometimes this happens with band, they kind of get muddled and lost in what they want to do because the music scene has changed so drastically for them that they don't know really where they fit in anymore and they still want to fit in. Some bands don't care. They're going to play what they want to play. Bands like Hawkwind, they're the same from album one to the last album, maybe a little bit of change, but they never seem to care what the musical style was. They were going to play what they wanted to play. Well, none of these bands qualify for that. So, Anyways, having said all that, um, I'm just going to talk about the, ba the band. So the first one out of the shoot is a band that most people will agree this was the changing album. Yes, 90125. Definitely a change, major change in direction for this band. Um, they went from one of the premier, if not the premier, progressive rock band putting out lengthy songs and really complex melodies, really complex uh, compilations of music, different time signatures, complex lyrics, all kinds of stuff like that. Really, but the, the main thing was it was very complex to this, which is completely not complex, uh, complex at all. There are a couple songs on here that still have that little reminiscent sound from their past, but they're overshadowed by the hits, I think. so. This album, um, 90125 from Yes, when it came out, I initially hated it for good reason because it doesn't sound anything like any of their other stuff. And they were, at that point in time, they were my favorite band. But within a short period of time, I kind of uh, put it aside and I, I kind of liked this album. And today, I'm kind of in the middle. So I went through a period at the beginning where I hated it. And then I went through a period where I really liked it. 
and now I'm at a period where eh, it's, it's okay. Uh, it's a, it's an okay album. Gets a two from me. I think by pop standards, this is a good album. If you're just gonna if you're gonna think of this as a totally different band and just go by pop standards, this is a good album. If you're comparing it to their past, it's not so good. So, anyways, um, this album has, of course, their mega hit, uh, probably their biggest hit of all time, I believe, "Owner of a Lonely Heart." Um, yeah. I don't know that there was ever a time I really liked this particular track a lot. I guess there was initially, but I never really loved it. Hold on, another track like that could the two of them I could uh, be okay with never hearing it. It can happen is a good song, solid. Um, has a little bit of that progressive re uh, element still left to in it from their past, and perhaps that's why I like it. Uh, changes another another song very similar to me they're both fairly similar songs and both have that little bit leave it is a bit of a different track you know it um it's more of a it's a vocal track so it's not something that yes hasn't done before they have uh do they do do those kind of vocal sounds they are a vocal group with a lot of progressive sounds to them as well um so this song doesn't totally dissimilar from them of course, it's a little too poppy. Our song, City of Love and Hearts. Hearts is another one that could be kind of kind of fitting into that past part a bit, a bit more. But overall, it was well produced. Trevor Horn produced it. You know, John Anderson, Chris Squire, Trevor Rabin, Alan White, Tony Kay. You know, these are all classic Yes guys, pretty much. Trevor Rabin, maybe not so much, but the others are. Um, and definitely, but the album is absolutely a different change in direction and was it was even more streamlined on big generator i don't know about um talk because i actually that's one of the albums i don't own we really have any well maybe i might have it i don't know if i do or not but it's not an album that i really care if i hear it or i don't hear it you know so definitely one of the bands that had a change in direction big change i think next band up the change in this musical direction isn't the music so much as the overall sound. So this was a they were a heavy they were a hard rock bluesy band, which had some really catchy hard rock bluesy stuff. Not that they didn't have some commercial stuff in their music, they definitely did. This one just took it a stage further, and they took that corner and became much more commercial sounding, and almost hair metal like. And we're talking about. White Snake's 87 album. At one point, this was easily my favorite White Snake album. It hasn't, as we already know, I've done an, an episode on it where I said it hasn't aged well with me. I don't care for it as much as I used to, but I don't hate the album. I don't. I really don't. It's just not one of the, it's not one of the White Snake albums I reach for. I like some of their newer stuff, and I like a lot of their older stuff, stuff prior to this, but not so much this album anymore. I mean this. This album has Ainsley Dunsbar on it, and to me, uh, that makes it a good album right off the bat because he's on the album. Um, you know, you got John Sykes on here. So, I mean, this is some good, real good personnel. David Coverdale is fantastic. Neil Murray, good bass player. This is a strong album. Uh, Crying in the Rain, great tune. Still of the Night, the best tune on this album, I think, by, it's not even close, really. Children of Night, another good tune on here. Here we go again. Well known. Is this love? Who cares? You know, <laughs> don't turn away. Like it's a strong album, but it just, um, just not that great of an album for me. But the point that we're bringing it up for today is this was definitely a, 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 I don't know if it was a serious change in direction, but it was a change in direction. They definitely went for the commercial uh, Apple here, and. For all intents and purposes, hit a home run. So there are people out there that absolutely think this is a fantastic album, and then there's some that absolutely loathe it. I'm not one of those. I don't really think it is as great as album as it has been portrayed as, but it's definitely a huge change in direction for them, bringing them almost to that hair metal sound. I think maybe a little heavier than most hair metal bands, but definitely there. So there, there's a second band on the list of album. Uh, of the albums that have changed musical direction. So the 87 album changes that musical direction for Whitesnake. 
Next up, this is a band that you either love them or you hate them. You don't all know what's coming here. Um, I neither love them or hate them. I probably at one time absolutely loved them and you couldn't say anything wrong about them. And then I grew to not really care anymore and I'm probably a little bit more on the don't care at all anymore. Um, but this album, despite its obvious change in direction, we're talking about Dynasty, um, the, this complete change in direction from the music and I think it, it kind of absorbed a little bit of their solo stuff because their, indis, their individual vocal parts um, have a lot more in common with those albums than they do with their albums from before that. Their, um, this is a more clearer sounding album. It definitely has a disco element to it. We all know that. It's very poppy. Paul Stan This may be Paul Stanley's best vocal album. Maybe. Um, really strong um, vocal distinctions for all four members. This album and then the subsequent next album on, on Mass, very similar. This one's a little bit better as far as quality of music and distinction of songs than Unmasked is not as good as that. And they had another direction change when they went to The Elder, very different from anything they've ever done. And then they had another dir direction change when they went to Creatures of the Night and Lick It Up, which are harder albums. And then they kind of settled down. After they, they were kind of, it seemed to me they were lost. They didn't know where they were going. They were trying to change and trying to keep up with the times and trying to be relevant. That's why they got rid of the uh, they decide to get rid of the makeup and total ch change of music. They eventually ended up back playing some music that wasn't completely dissimilar from their original stuff, but better, more better production, better everything. Had a little bit more of a grunge feel to it on some of the albums, hence the reason why I stopped. I, I don't listen to any of those albums. I don't know anything about them. But this album definitely was a change in direction for them. Um, at that, At this point, when this album came out, they were one of the largest, if not the largest, band in the world. And uh, when this came out, um, they were trying to capture new territory and they didn't really succeed very well with it. And they lost a lot of their bass. And, and because they went from a hard rock, hard rocking band to a pop kind of disco-y band, which didn't sit well with its members. Anyways, that's Kiss's Dynasty. The next album out, I don't own the album. Um, the reason I don't own it is because I can't stand it. I don't like it. I don't like the, the direction the album took the band in. Uh, I don't own it today. I know that there's songs on it that are popular and I can't even tell you them because I don't even listen to it at all. I absolutely love their first five, four or five albums. I think it's five. I think it's five, yep. The first five albums, killer, that bluesy, hard rock, uh, a folky acoustic stuff, um, led by one of the great vocalists in rock music, in Ann Wilson. Of course, we're talking about Heart. The album that, and then they they went through a couple of albums at the end of the old era where they were not quite sure where they wanted to be. The uh, the albums sounded more like the old stuff, but there you could see that they were kind of a little bit lost. And then they came out with this album, Passion Works, which absolutely shot them into the 80s. They did actually very well with these albums that came out in the 80s. To me, they're just a pop giant at this point, putting out hit after hit, album after album, really cementing themselves as uh, one of the great pop bands of the 1980s. But I can't stand it. I didn't. I didn't like the direction at all. I didn't like any of the music. I don't care for that era of heart, and I will never own any of those albums. So far as I can think, I can't imagine why I would buy any of them. Somebody gives them to me, I might put them on the shelf. But who knows what I'll do with them? But uh, it started for me with Passion Works. Um, it's a very unmemorable album with a lot of very unmemorable songs. Yeah, they had a couple of hits off the album. I'm not going to deny that, but I don't care, you know. So for me, um, the original Hearts Down was incredible. I love all those original albums. I listen to them regularly. Passion Works, Onward, forget it. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't know about their newer stuff. 
Uh, I know Anne's not even with the band. I have listened to her most recent released solo album, which I think is pretty decent. But uh, overall, I, I've kind of lost interest in the band after those first five albums, and it's never really returned. It might someday, but I'm not holding my breath. So that's Heart. They're the number four band on this today. The last band is a band that I absolutely love. Many people who are in the prog community love it. Many of the prog community here on YouTube love them. How could you not love them? They're fantastic. They created some of the best progressive rock of all time, in my opinion. And then they began to change. Now, where they changed, this is the one band that it's kind of debatable where that change took place. Did it take, cha did it take place on this album? And then there were three. Definitely, this is a toned down, more con um, confined, constructed, uh, less uh, complex album than their predecessors, but still has a lot of progressive sound to it. But they had a hit off this, Follow Me, Follow You. You cannot say that's a progressive song. I don't think it is. It's very poppy and was probably the first kind of like that song. Yeah, they had a little bit of that with uh, Your Own Special Way on Wind and the Weathering and a little bit of that with Ripples on Trick of the Tail. And they may have had some of that in some of the past songs with the Gabriel era as well. But this was the first kind of poppy hit and I think they had some success with it. So then this album came out. Now, is this the beginning of it? Some people say so. Some people say Duke is the beginning of the 1980s and the beginning of the pop-oriented Genesis band that we came to know later in the 80s. I mean, it has the two big hits, um, Turn It On Again, which I absolutely love that song, and uh, Misunderstanding, which i kind of okay with that. But then there's quite a bit of progressive rock on this album, Duke's End, uh, Behind the, the Lanes, you know, but I never really like, I never really got into the progressive stuff on this album. And the, the, ironically, the stuff I like the best are the two pop songs. But they took them, when they had success with that, there was, then they came to this album. I think this is the next album. Yeah, it is. Uh, Genesis, Abacab. So the song Abacab is great. I love it. It doesn't matter if it's a different direction or not. It's just a great song. No Reply at All, um, Man on the Corner, um, not not as much so. And so this, to me, this album, by the time they got to this album, they're committed to that pop sound. So where did it start? Did it Was it committed here? Was this the change in direction? Abacab? Was Duke the change in direction because they were now committing to that or starting to commit to that? Or with the follow me follow you one then there were three was that the beginning of it i don't know i think this is probably a, a, a more accurate statement would be this is the beginning of it but this is the commitment to it so this is the change album this is the album that changes them to become the pop super giants that they eventually became and i will go on record as saying i i don't hate that genesis i don't there's some stuff in their discography that came out in the 1980s and 90s that I like. I do like it. Invisible Sun, uh, Invisible Touch, I like that song. Some people don't. I happen to like it. Kind of loses me a bit on uh, We Can Dance or whatever it's called. Uh, we Can't Dance, I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah, so by that time, I'm not really into them anymore. So I own all of the Genesis stuff except for the final album, which is calling all stations and the only reason I don't think I own that one is just because I've never actually seen it anywhere and when I'm out looking for albums I'm not looking for anything specific I'm looking for stuff that I want and sometimes if I don't see it then I don't got I don't get it right that's the way it is so for me um I don't dislike that Genesis era given a choice I would rather have more of the older era lots more of that and, you know, there's bands that put that stuff out later. IQ, Marillion, that kind of bands put that kind of uh, more Genesee sounding stuff. And I like them quite a bit. So for me, um, the changing albums, I'll list them. Uh, from Yes, is, yes, it's probably 90125. From Hard, it's Passion Works. From White Snake, it's 87. From Kiss, it's Dynasty. Although you could say they changed several directions with them. And then for Genesis, 
Maybe you're going to call it Duke, or maybe you can call it Abacab. Either one of those two albums is a change in direction for them. Uh, I've always thought of it as Duke because that's when they started to be not what I liked anymore. And it wasn't that I, I disliked the Duke or the albums that came after. It's just that they weren't, I wasn't in love with them anymore. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, five, another five albums that were a change in direction for uh, rock these rock bands and I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed that please hit the like and subscribe any comments about the albums um, <coughs> if you disagree with where they started to change you can say that too I'm just going by what I see it doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly when it took place it may take place some people view it a little earlier some a little bit later so you can, uh, you can say whatever you want in the comment section. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And we'll be back next uh, Wednesday with another episode of Favorites. So have yourself a good night and enjoy. Take care.